what is Medi Honey? Medi Honey is a brand name of this particular product that we use in wound or in burn injuries that is 100% made out of Leptospermum Manuka Honey. Its active ingredients is active Leptospermum Honey and uh, this is a honey produced from the nectar of the Manuka tree. Uh, the scientific name of this tree is Leptospermum Escopar Escoparium. This is found in New Zealand. It is for this reason that Manuka honey is also known as active Leptospermum honey or ALH. So there is an ongoing claim about the antimicrobial property due to the presence of compounds like methyl glyoxal or also known as MGO. Activity of Manuka honey is often measured by its unique Manuka factor UMF or MGO rating which indicates the antibacterial strength of this product. Higher UMF or MGO ratings generally signify higher antibacterial properties. Manuka honey is used for various purposes including wound healing. There are two factors that impact wound healing. Number one is non-viable devitalized or necrotic tissue in the wound base or in the wound margin. Number two is high pH. So in a nutshell, Medi honey possess high osmolarity. What is osmolarity? It is the measure of solute particles found in a solution. The high sugar content of Medihoney draws the fluid to the surface of the wound, enhancing body's ability to digest or liquefy necrotic or devitalized tissue. So, um, in a sense, it enhances the autolytic debridement within the wound base. Likewise, the high osmolarity, since it draws uh, fluid to the surface of the wound, provides a moist healing environment uh, favorable to uh, granulation tissue formation and epithelial migration. What is epithelial migration? If you are patient watching this, okay, for you to close or resurface a wound, okay, the body has to grow epithelial cells from the intact margins and these epithelial cells will march towards or walk towards the center of the wound. So they need to walk in a red carpet okay so red red carpet means be, the environment has to be moist and red it has to be granular they cannot jump over a necrotic tissue they cannot jump over an obstacles provided by any some sort of devitalized tissue in the base it has to be clean and it has to be moist it has to be granular now, um, the other thing, the other factor is the pH. So the pH has to be low. There has been extensive uh, research asserting to the fact that low pH is associated with enhanced wound healing. Don't you know that Medihoney has a pH of 3.5 to 4.5 and uh, it makes the wound environment acidic so when uh, you know all wounds are contaminated with by uh, bacteria and um, once the, the level of this bacteria reaches a certain critical colonization they compete with the nutrition of or to the oxygen or the enzyme and whatnot that's needed for the production of new cells in the wound base. So therefore, high pH is associated with a delayed wound healing and med honey reduce that pH in the wound base. Don't you know that the stomach is sterile because it is because of the high acidity provided by hydrochloric acid. That is same true with the wound. So in today's market, Medi Honey comes in various products. We have the Medi Honey Gel, the Medi Honey Paste, the Medi Honey Hydrogel Sheet, 
the calcium uh, alginate and the Marihani hydrogel colloidal sheet and let's talk about them one by one but before before that let me just uh, tell you in advance that uh, it all depends on the amount of drainage uh, the wound is presenting at particular times so that it will be your guide in your selection what type of Marihani product you would use in your wound so uh, the Medi honey gel is 80% ALH or 80% Manuka honey and 20% gelling agents that provides increased stability at the site of the wound. When to use this uh, product, Medi honey gel? So this is just for lightly to moderately exuding wound. So the other one is the Medi honey paste. It is 100% ALH uh, content. So when to use? I would use this for hard, uh, hard to dress wound. Like, say, for example, if you have a wound, it has some tunnels, has some undermining. The the advantage of the paste is that when you place it on the base, it has the ability to migrate or to travel uh, to the tunnel or also to go to those undermine in irregular surfaces uh, below the edges of the wound. So I would use this in this situation. The number uh, three. Uh, type of Medihani product that we see in the market today is the Medihani hydrogel sheet. So it's only 45% uh, Manuka honey. So it's uh, <clears throat> uh, combined the benefit of uh, ALH or the active lip leptos uh, leptospermum uh, honey with the uh, handling capability of super absorbent polymer. So there are two types or two versions. We had the adhesive and the non-adhesive. My favorite is the non-adhesive. So when to use non-draining to lightly exuding wound. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a hydrogel. Hydrogel donates moisture, so you do not use this on otherwise draining wounds. So if you want to donate moisture, uh, further moisture to the wound, so you gonna use the hydrogel hydrogel sheet impregnated with Mary honey. Number four, ladies and gentlemen, is calcium alginate. This is 95% Manuka honey. So as fluid enters the dressing, the honey is released while the dressing uh, absorbs and forms a gel. So when to use uh, calcium alginate Mary honey, this is usually used to pack wounds or to fill wounds and for moderately to exuding wound because it's so the fifth uh, Medihani product that's available in the market today are the Medihani Hydrogel Colloidal Sheets. They are 63% ALH or 63% Manuka Honey. So this is used for non-draining to lightly draining wounds. So I always tell my kids, always make good choices. So today we're going to be practicing making good choices and our dressing selection for all these medic medi honey products so number one if you have a sloughy scar okay first you need to identify the ex exudate amount if it's lightly or it's light to moderate use gel paste or hydrogel colloidal sheet if it is heavily draining you use calcium alginate so how about if the scenario is you have a scar and your goal is to soften or remove the scar. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that not all scar needed to be removed or to need to be debrided. But if the goal is the removal of the scar and you want to uh, use Medihani product, how would you know which product would you use? So it is always go back to uh, looking at the amount of drainage. So if uh, the drainage is light, use gel a paste or hydrogel colloidal sheet. If it has moderate drainage or heavy, heavy drainage, use calcium alginates. So how about if the situation is that you have a wound that is granulating, it still assess the drainage. A granulating wound, uh, especially if you have a healthy granulation tissue, it is likely to have a light to moderate exudates. In this case, use a gel or hydrogel colloidal sheet. How about if you have a, a wound that is actively epithelializing? Uh, usually in this situation, the drainage is usually light at this stage. So 
I'd say uh, better use a hydro, uh, hydrogel colloidal sheet uh, Medihani product in this situation. Ladies and gentlemen, as she, we continue with our discussion of Medihani products, here are my tips for you. Number one, protect the skin around the wound to avoid maceration. So, uh, in my experience, when you, especially when you're using the paste, okay, uh, the the paste could easily go out to the uh, wound base, and uh, sometimes it macerates the uh, the uh, peri wound. So, always make sure that uh, protect the peri wound to avoid ma maceration. Apply wipes or ointment like calmoseptin or any other uh, moisture barrier products at the uh, peri wound when applying um, Medihani, especially if you're using gel or, or, or the paste. Now, uh, keep in mind though that initially, there will be an increase in the exudate. Uh, it may seem that there is an inc increase in the um, drainage uh, initially, and you need to explain that to the patient that you, your goal is to pull, you know, take advance the advantage of the high osmolarity of uh, of uh, of the agent or the honey and it pulls the uh, fluid beneath the wound to the surface of the wound so initially that's what you want you want uh, that mechanism to uh, uh, to take place in order to clean up the wound so it uh, looks like at first it is uh, sometimes special would say oh i think i did the honey and it made it worse you need to explain that to your patient my other uh, tip for you are the contraindications so uh, this uh, product is contraindicated for third degree burns sensitivity to honey and uh, to uh, if your goal is to control a heavy uh, uh, bleeding wound this may not be a good product of choice now my other tip for you guys is always soak the dressing with uh, saline solution if uh, hard to remove during dressing change I would make sure that I would soak the dressing so that it will not harm the, 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 the good tissue especially if uh, the dressing has not been changed for a while you can also educate the patient that there might be some sort of light uh, or yes light intransient is uh, stinging uh, this is due, due to the low pH of, uh, of the ointment. If uh, it persists despite analgesics, remove the dressing, cleanse the area, and discontinue the, discontinue the use of the Medihani. Let's say in some situations, patient complains that I think my wound is getting worse with the Medihani. So what in this situation, I would always explain to the patient that the increase in the exudate is due to the high osmolarity that we just talked about earlier. And this also actually may lead to maceration. So what do you do in this situation? Manage by adding an absorptive dressing or increase the dressing change frequency and make sure that like what I said earlier, protect the peri wound all the time. So the other tip that I can tell you really, ladies and gentlemen, as we approaching the end of this video is that uh, the increase in wound size is due to autolytic debridement. So especially initially, if your goal is to clean up the wound base, sometimes there is an increase in size because you are the, because of the ability of the Medihani to uh, produce uh, or to enhance autolytic debridement that would result to the increase in size of the wound. Now, let's elevate our discussion further. In a systematic review by Yilmaz and Aijin with objective to evaluate the place of honey and wound treatment by investigating randomized control, control trials, this study has been published in June of 2020 in the journal Complementary Therapies in Medicine. So these authors demonstrated and concluded that the bioactive component contained in honey reduced inflammation, edema, and pain. The honey demonstrated the treatment effect and accelerated granulation and epithelial growth in migration. In another um, systematic review, oh by the way, why am I citing systematic re review? In the hierarchy of evidence, systematic review are the most, I mean systematic review and meta-analysis occupy the highest positions in the hierarchy of evidence, higher than randomized controlled trials. So be because these are actually a collection of several randomized controlled trials put together and analyzed. So in this, um, another systematic review that I was going to cite, conducted by uh, Tabis 
et al. published uh, online in November 2022, it was demonstrated that uh, combining manuka honey with other natural agents like propolis, antimicrobial uh, peptides, laser treatment, and hydrogel, and other forms of antibiotic uh, have superior antimicrobial activity in comparison to the honey alone. So the effect is actually synergistic. So what does synergistic effect mean? So if you combine two agents, the total effects of those agents uh, uh, are greater uh, than the sum of the individual effects of its uh, agents. So, uh, so the synergistic effect could be beneficial or harmful, but in this study, they have um, demonstrated that combining manuka honey with other agents causes uh, a better outcome to uh, wound healing. I'd say that as of right now, if the uh, FDA still continue to approve the use of Medihani in the United States, especially in wound healing, however, there is some reimbursement issue that CMS has uh, ruled lately. So, if you work in a Part B environment, make sure that you talk to the rep. Make sure that because there are some changes that happen lately about the reimbursement of Medihani products. I hope you enjoyed our discussion today and you learned something from it. If you did, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe because it will surely make this channel grow. Thank you very much and have a great day.